Good morning. Um, my name is Lionel Dibden. I'm the chair of the Council for Quality Assurance that uh, is part of the Ministry of Human Services. Um, I would echo what Dell has said in terms of honoring the people who came before us. I'm particularly honored to be part of a group uh, that to which Eva referred, Dr. Cardinal referred earlier. Uh, we are in fact honored to have her at our table and I'm equally privileged to work with a group of people who are um, very independent minded. Now I say that in this way because many of you who know of the existence of the Council for Quality Assurance um, have some confusion, I might, my words, might say about where the council exists vis-a-vis -vis the ministry and vis-a-vis -vis the advocates office. So uh, taking a leaf out of Eva's book, I'm going to tell you a story um, and hopefully it'll illustrate how we fit into this picture of uh, contributing to the well-being of children uh, through a quality assurance, quality improvement mandate uh, that is what we have. Um, before I do that, I just, for those of you who are technically minded, I'd point you to your binder, tab 5, sub tab 2, uh, where we have information about the Con Council for Quality Assurance. Uh, where is located the description of the uh, Council's existence being the result of initially a ministerial order and then legislation? Uh, which created the council, uh, which reports to the Minister of Human Services and has two mandates. One, to identify effective practice and make recommendation for improvement of child intervention services at the direction of the Minister and in cooperation with the Department. And two, to appoint an expert review panel to review incidents giving rise to serious injuries or death of children as reported by the Director. Those are the two mandates of the council. The story. The, the council, f the, the notion uh, that a multidisciplinary independent group of uh, professionals should be available to the ministry uh, to provide advice and direction around quality assurance issues in this child intervention system was conceived by Yvonne Fritz uh, at the time uh, when um, such a body was seen to be very important. Um, the desire for independent advice in this direction seemed quite strong at the time. The gestation, I'm a pediatrician, forgive me for the analogy. The gestation, during the gestation of the council, it was sometimes tumultuous. So by the time it came for the delivery of the council, the council was delivered to then Minister Dave Hancock. The, the council uh, was delivered uh, in a way that some of you may be familiar with. Birthing um, of all kinds can come with some surprises. The surprise in this instance that this was a twin gestation. <laughs> The analogy will continue. The twin gestation gave rise to twin A, who was indeed independent of the ministry, and that was the, the office of the Child and Youth Advocate. That office became independent and, as Dell has mentioned, was tasked with a review of child death uh, in care and in uh, receiving service and serious injury. The council turned out to be twin B who was still somewhat attached by the umbilical cord to the ministry, where the independence of the council, which had been conceived in the, the, the council having been conceived as an independent body, was now uh, one which reported to the ministry. So for some of you who were confused, we were during this process. It has become very clear now that we have uh, a role in advising the ministry and Minister Bellar, who is now uh, guiding us through our childhood and into adolescence, hopefully, uh, where we can be truly helpful to the ministry, but more importantly, helpful to the children and families who, in, who uh, interact with the intervention system. So we can achieve the mandate or one of our goals, which is to 
have those children and families have a good experience uh, when they inter interact with that system. So the, the role that the council has today is a dual one advising direct, under the direction of the ministry and the minister about systemic issues while participating in individual case-specific reviews through expert panels. That particular role and the, the systemic role combined to hopefully bring value and add value to the system and add benefit to this endeavor that we're all embarking on together today. Thank you.